Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I really do hope the start of your day is amazing. I know mine is because I'm back here at the Reptarium and I can't tell you that every single day as we get closer, which T minus 14 days till install, really all I've been thinking about is that, you know, how it's gonna be cooler. Don't get me wrong, I love being here at the Reptarium, but the fact that we're gonna be able to walk down this aisle and walk right into the new place is really gonna be amazing. And I'm so glad that you guys are coming along on the journey. Let me know in the comments if you're excited about it, if you're gonna come to visit. Again, the idea is the second Friday in March is when we're gonna hopefully open up the doors. More on that, might do like an after party, stuff like that, but regardless, a uh, lot of things going on. And oh, by the way, we were open last night and something interesting happened. Come here, big girl. Ugh. Ivy is going back into shed. And uh, yesterday was just a weird day, I'm not gonna lie to you. You know, we do a lot of birthday parties and kids events and stuff like that. And when you're working with big animals, you know, there's always a chance that, you know, there could be an accident. But uh, it's not very common, to be honest with you. Well, at a birthday party yesterday, I had Moo Moo, the cow reticulated python, and uh, she decided to pee on a couple kids, uh, which happens, but it's pretty rare, to be totally honest with you. Later on, the same birthday party, I had Al Machino out, and guess what? He decided to pee all over the place, including on these people's rugs, which I was like, oh, Oh my gosh, that really never happens where two accidents happen in one event. So I was kind of like, what the heck? People were fantastic about it and everything was fine. You know, we cleaned the mess up and all that stuff. But well, later on, we're open at the Reptarium and we take good old Ivy out here and she's just hanging out with people and then she just explodes. I'm not talking like a little pee, like Al Macino and Moo Moo. I'm talking like you turn the faucet on and it just went goo, like projectile all over the place. Uh, got a couple people pretty good uh, and uh, that is just kind of how it goes sometimes. So uh, to be honest with you, that was probably the residue of that big pig she ate just a couple weeks ago. She's probably holding that in. You know what happens? You start moving these animals around and things start moving and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, waterworks happen. And so anyways, that was uh, pretty eventful. Thankfully, again, the people here were fantastic. And, and oftentimes when someone does get pooped on, we give them a free shirt, just kind of like, hey, we don't want you to walk around with a P-shirt. So the way I look at it is, uh, you know, sometimes it's a lucky thing to have a, a little bit of an accident at the Reptarium. I absolutely love the lavender albinos. This is actually a lavender that is het for piebald ball python, which is the dreamsicles. She is not quite ready to breed yet, but she'll be ready for next year. Unbelievable color. Again, it's a recessive mutation, just like an albino, but instead of just being a T negative albino, it's like a T positive albino with that tyrosine that gives it that kind of purplish hue and stuff like that. And uh, I tell you, I love them and I love the lavender pies. We actually could potentially produce some lavender pies this year, what they call dreamsicles, and uh, that would be pretty epic. So obviously this is the arboreal cage that we brought back from Texas and uh, it's not gonna live here in the front office space, but uh, we're getting the floors done tomorrow. So the floor needs to be clear so we can't put the cage in. So as soon as the floors are done, we're gonna be able to install this into that curved wall. But I got it here and I'm just excited what it's gonna look like when it has a light. Obviously this is just a UV light. We're gonna have a basking light as well, but I wanna put this up here and just kind of see what it's gonna look like lit up. I think it's gonna be absolutely amazing. So I just gotta plug this in, turn the light on. Yep. See what we got. All right, so it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna be honest with you, and this is one of the things about these taller enclosures, is we're gonna to have to really play with it. Obviously, it's not extremely lit up, which tells me that we just have to get like stronger lights. Maybe even some halogens are gonna to have to go to kind of light the entire enclosure up. So, still looks really cool, but uh, definitely that UV light is not gonna be enough to light up these entire cages, which may be the case with the new cage. We may even have to do some LED strips on the inside shooting down. So, uh, again, it's all about problem solving. Still cool, not as cool as I expected, but uh, hey, one step closer. It seems like forever since I've talked to you guys about Potato, of course the Centralium Blue Tongue Skink. I mean, he's amazing, and you know, it's a absolute crowd favorite too. Every kid that comes in just loves Potato because again, you know, he does look like a potato, and uh, like you can see right here, he basically acts like a potato too. And it's like I've mentioned in the past that potatoes are pretty rare Centralian as far as the US. You know, they're from the red center of Australia and there's just a handful in the entire country. So it's really a pleasure to be having an opportunity to work with an animal like potato here. Now he's a male, I don't have any other animals to breed it to. So I don't know if I'll ever breed 
appreciate it. He's only about four years old, so he's gonna live a long, long time. So he'll be a big part of the Reptarium and future education and all that type of stuff. Whether or not I ever get another female and try to breed them, I'm not sure. If I could, I certainly would love to because they have always been one of my favorite blue tongue skinks. You guys know that it's breeding season right now for blue tongues, and boy, do I wish I could be breeding these little monkeys right now. Interestingly enough, where they're from gets pretty cold. It'll get down into the 30s and even the 20s in that area. So these guys can really just kind of find a place that's not quite as cold, you know, dig down in and get through it. Usually warms up into maybe the 50s during the day or so, but pretty interesting skink species. And the reason I love Potato is the fact that, again, he acts like this. Most other skinks would kind of be running away. These guys are just so chill and they're just absolutely cute. All the lights are on now at the building in the new Reptarium. So looking really good here. Obviously the rooms are getting done. We got the windows trimmed out here. Doors are on, so things are coming together. Lori over here is fixing up the wall, and that looks really good, Lori, by the way. I wasn't sure how it was gonna look, but it looks literally like it wasn't ever painted. So unfortunately, the previous tenant actually had purple bricks. Well, purple bricks don't really work for what we want, so Lori just got the paint that's the same color as the normal brick color, and it doesn't even look painted. It really turned out yeah, well. that's what I was going for, so yeah, I'm happy with it. Gosh, and then so the technique is some weird glove you've got going? Uh, well, I wanted a sponge, and I couldn't find what I wanted. I found this glove, and it actually is working out pretty so good. So this isn't for paint? This is just it like, is for paint. Oh, it is? Okay. I don't, I, I don't know what, but well, <laughs> it, it works, works for this. Yeah, it actually works out really good. Literally, the brick looks really amazing, so that's good. So, uh, okay, good, excellent. So I'll let Lori get back to that. Like I said, things are coming together really well here, starting to look better and better. We're gonna get all this stuff out of here today because we have the floor going in tomorrow. So they're gonna grind the floor, stain it, and stuff like that. So uh, we gotta get this place cleaned up and ready for them tomorrow. That's gonna be a huge improvement when they're done with the grinding and surfacing this. Now, I don't know how long it's gonna take, a day, maybe two tops, but uh, after that, this place is gonna look absolutely incredible. Inspections on the ceiling, and then we can actually put the ceiling tiles up, which is again gonna make the place even look better and more finished. to breaking bread with the bar checks. <laughs> we just want to thank HelloFresh for kind of helping us out with this. And for those of you guys that know, uh, I've been using HelloFresh, well, we've been using HelloFresh for, for the last like almost year. And uh, it is huge for us because we're super busy and we don't like to eat unhealthy. So for me, you know, HelloFresh is a great option. And, uh, and you know, spending time with Lori is always a blessing. So I like to be able to... <laughs> Today we're going to actually be making this right here, which is a Melty Monterey Jack Burger. I'm all about the burgers. Lori likes her burgers, let me tell you what. So we have all our ingredients, and that's the thing that's great about, at least my experience with HelloFresh, is the fact that I'm not going to, you know, I don't like onions. Do you like onions? You can skip it. Yeah, so that's the thing that's nice. They send you like a recipe that anyone can use. I mean, it's just literally step by step by step. Uh, and if you don't like onions like I don't, you just throw them away. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I'm not what you do. I'm cutting potatoes into half inch wedges. And then I've got a mince and grate garlic. Now I'm going to do my quick chef thing, Laura. I know you'll be impressed by this. God, we've got, you know, a hundred meals from, from HelloFresh. Uh, it's always came in really, really good. And I don't know how to cut these. Too small? It's supposed to be like a fry. Like, so does not piss at me if I got that for a fry? If I opened up a restaurant, that's the size fries I would say. <sighs> You go out of business. These guys are actually also <laughs> ecologically friendly too, where uh, you know all their bags and stuff like that and everything they send is recycled stuff. Good so to it's, know. it's pretty cool, nice. you know. I mean, I don't know. It's it's cool that company like HelloFresh is around because we get to eat good, good sustainability for the yeah, environment. It, it does make it good because a between the time, which you've said a lot, and b I'm not gonna lie, I hate shopping, whether it's for food, clothes, anything. So. That also, I don't like cooking. I don't like <laughs> shopping. <laughs> so he cooks. But to not have to worry and just have the ingredients delivered takes one more thing off of the plate, which makes me happy. Yep, so next, uh, let's see. We need a baking sheet and we toss them with a drizzle of oil. Okay. And half of the dry seasoning. Drizzle with oil and salt? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. 
Oh, oh that's goodness. balsamic vinegar. Guess, guess who didn't read the directions, Brian? Here. <laughs> oh man, those are gonna be flavorful. <laughs> yep, that's how that goes. <laughs> Never know what you're gonna get. We gotta put those in the oven for, uh, let's see, 20 to 25 minutes. The thing that's nice is that vast majority of HelloFresh's meals take less than 40 minutes, with a lot of them like 25 to 30 minutes. And we're gonna move on to making some garlic mayo. What do you think about that, Lori? Uh, go for it. Woo! That looks good. That's exciting. <laughs> no. You like garlic and mayo? No, it tastes like mayo. <laughs> okay, got a table of two equal patties. Break out of your dinner rut with HelloFresh 22 plus seasonal chef curated recipes each week. Fast track ones that are under 20 minutes. You can get healthy meals, you can get whatever you want. I mean, there's something for everyone, including low calorie, vegetarian, and family friendly recipes every week. HelloFresh pre-portioned ingredients means there's less prep for you and less food waste. Literally anything you need, they have, so you don't have to worry about, oh crap, I'm out of this, because they give you what size you need, which is very convenient. HelloFresh is now $5.66 per serving. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely tastes good. Quick meal, this is the way you need to end it, I tell you what. Guys, seriously, if you want to have this experience, do me a favor, go to HelloFresh.com, enter the promo code BRIANB10, and for their New Year's special right now, you can get 10 free meals plus free shipping. Again, HelloFresh.com, use the promo code BRIANB10. For now, I'm just gonna go and get down on this. Mm, it's good. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see if we can feed our new turtles. We've got this uh, little freeze-dried shrimp right here. We'll do fish, we'll do freeze-dried shrimp, we'll do little turtle pellets, just kind of mix them up. Let's see if these little monkeys want to eat. Come on, little dude. Come on. Oh, he loves it. Oh my gosh, that thing just took it like nothing, man. Oh my God, that's awesome. Let's see if this little one wants to eat. You want to eat, bud? Oh, he's trying. There he goes. Oh my God, it's so cute. It's probably a little bit hard for them. I mean, they're trying really hard to eat. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Look at them both go. Oh my God, that is awesome. Let's see if I can feed this little dude here. Come on, little guy. You wanna eat? He's so funny. You're not in the water, silly. I'll just leave that for him a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can get this little dude to eat. You guys wanna eat? Come on. Spork is definitely going. Come on, Sporky. Oh my gosh, Spoon over there loves to eat. Fork on this side definitely took some food too. <laughs> he is so adorable. It's gonna take these guys a few days to kind of adjust and stuff like that. I'm really excited that Spoon and Fork, of course, Spork is eating really good. Other two-headed little monkey didn't take any food but seem interested. And then of course the snow hasn't taken food yet either but uh, these guys will get settled in shortly and uh, get going but they are absolutely adorable. A quick break from everything. I just want to kind of continue to tell you guys to follow your dreams, right? Because, you know, for so many years, BHB was my dream, you know, to build a collection, breed snakes, do that for a living. And it's been such an amazing experience. And then, of course, it kind of evolved to kind of education and, and YouTube and social media and now the Reptarium and now the expansion of the Reptarium. And I actually have ideas for a second expansion I'll share with you guys in, in the future because it's a wild expansion. It would happen to do with this basement that I'm standing in right now, to be totally honest with you. More on that later but the point is is that it's amazing when you follow your dreams I tell people all the time you know I work seven days a week you know day to night every single day but the fact is I'm doing something I love so I don't need a day off hardly ever because this is what I would do on my day off and if you're following that dream and doing things that you really love you never have to worry about working too much because it's what you want to do even in your spare time so make your hobby your job or something like that you know or make something you're passionate about your job in your future and uh, it is truly amazing and I want to inspire you guys and just kind of encourage you guys to please follow that dream. Looks like someone's hungry. Tell you what, it's so bizarre that Bowser's been eating so much all winter long. Really crazy because again, uh, he shut down all last winter. This winter, he's just been pounding food. 
Just going through all the ball pythons. Looks like we've got a bunch of locks today. This is actually a lorry ball python bred to a lorry pinstripe ball python. So we can obviously get super lorry, super lorry pins, some more lorry pins and stuff like that. But that's a good lock. And this girl, you can see, she's been bred a lot. She had 15 millimeter follicles last time. She's bred two, four, six times, which is pretty good. That's usually a good sign. Again, just a bunch of other little locks right here. We actually had an Enchi pin banana that's being bred to a chocolate ball python. And that should make a pretty cool combo because that enchi and chocolate and banana stuff and of course the pinstripe stuff together is really cool too so breeding season's moving along females starting to swell a bunch so that's really a good sign so uh everything's good here of course we're still breeding children's and spotted pythons we've got walma pythons breeding a bunch of other stuff so uh python breeding season's going pretty well so i'll uh, just keep you guys posted we got to get an ultrasound later on this week as well so uh still a lot to do but it's coming along got a couple things in today this one's from australia Cost them $56.40 to ship this. Holy, Holy that, that's, Thank you. Wow, thank you. That, that's that's crazy. Australia always sends us great stuff, so I, we appreciate you guys, and I love they Australia. Send us band -aids, the way you use that knife. No, this is good stuff. So uh, I can't wait. I hope I can get back to Australia this year. I really do want to get back down there. Let's just go ahead and open oh, this up. What's that? It just. Never mind. Just cut away. Yes. Cut away. Uh, Okay. Whoa, this Aww. is cool. What in the heck? <laughs> okay, so we've got, first off, we've got Barchick Family and Crew, Joey Rue, Australia. It says, I watch your vlogs every day. It's helped me get over my fear of reptiles, sending some sweets from Australia. Hope you like the shirt. Oh my Regards, gosh. Regards, Elizabeth. That's awesome. And look at this. We've got koalas, kangaroos, crocs, oh. Uluru, got black uh, That's swans. Awesome. That is dope. I love it. I love it. Right size to a large. I love that. Thank you so Snake much. Gummies. Oh my god. Killer pythons. Tim Tams. You have no oh idea. God. Oh my god. Nobody gosh. but Brian is going to get any of oh. these. These all go in my room. These aren't for the crew. <laughs> these aren't for. No, I've been really doing good. I don't eat. I don't eat too much junk. But, but he I'll, really I'll eat some Tim Tams. I can. I can get out of some Tim Tams. And I love these. I remember being in stores. And it's just cool that Australia does this with like snakes alive and killer <laughs> python gummies. I mean, that is awesome. So thank you so much. That is incredible. I just am admiring this animal right here. This is a banana clown ball python. Oh my gosh. I remember when Mike Wilbanks from Constrictors Unlimited produced the very first one. I saw it in Arlington, Texas at a show and I was blown away. Now it's been several years since then and they're certainly more common than they used to be, but still a stunning animal. And this guy has been a little stud. Today he's not hooked up, but he has bred a lot. And we're breeding some really cool clown stuff, Enchi stuff, Pastavi, Enchi stuff. I mean, there's going to be a bunch of cool babies from this guy. I am so excited for when we can start cutting eggs again, just in a handful of months. And like I mentioned, we are ticking away just a couple weeks before install to the Reptarium expansion. It's going to be incredible. If you enjoyed this video, can you do me a favor? We, of course, had a podcast last night, so you can subscribe right here and uh, watch that podcast. I think you'll absolutely like it. Over here, you can roll through an entire playlist of the vlog if you so choose. On this side, you can hit the subscribe button to the vlog. Turn the post notifications on to these two if you don't mind. Have a wonderful day. Remember to be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.